because they'll find it young. I believe you. I believe it's almost in a precursor state to yeah. what we to what we normally withdraw from surface or not very deep oil fields, which in many cases are actually replenished over the years. They pump yeah. down to nothing and the earth uh, sends up more oil. That's just a natural process. It's pushed to the surface and they're all of a sudden rich with oil again. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they're just going down to the deeper areas where it's being made now. Beforehand, they were getting oil out of the areas where it had percolated through. Oil is buoyant, it's lighter than water, it moves up through the rock formations, and they were getting the shallow stuff, not in the zones of two miles and mm-hmm. further down where it's mm-hmm. being made. Now they're right. getting to the areas where it's being made, and it's much more difficult to control. By the way, on drilling with drilling mud, you can't work beyond 22,000 PSI because your drilling mud has to support the actual, um, um, uh, it has to pressurize the gas. So people speak about 70 or 80,000. Um, that's not possible because the drilling mud has to balance it and you cannot get beyond 24 pound mud weight. And nobody speaks about 24 pound mud weight um, using barium and hematite sulfate, um, iron sulfate to, to keep the oil and gas rod right down. So 22,000 pounds per square inch is an absolute maximum. Beyond that, you'd have to, you couldn't work with drilling mud. You'd have to use some technology I've never heard of. Hmm. Um, so uh, just to clarify that business, I know it's not nice because people love to, to pander these large numbers around. But yeah. You could, the, the drilling mud would be blown straight out of the ground, even probably mercury as, a, as your drilling mud would be blown out of the ground. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, yeah, not possible, but 22,000 is enormous. And I'm looking at somewhere between 17, 16, 17, and 22,000 as the absolute maximum. Pressure. Well, 22,000 is so destructive in its force, people don't understand it. That I have a little home pressure washer, 300 pounds PSI. It accidentally hit my finger. I didn't have a glove on. And it sure. tore, the, tore the top layer of skin off as if it was nothing. I did the same thing. <laughs> I did the same yeah. thing. Yeah, just, just 300 PSI. Yeah, yeah. That, that would... 22,000 yeah. is, is unbelievable. It's so destructive. It'll tear with sand with you. It just, it's like a laser beam. It just cuts up everything. Well, what should they do? If you were in charge, what would you do right now? Pull that cap? Um, the cap, the cap doesn't really matter whether it's there or not. That's not the solution. It's irrelevant. It's a, it's smoke and mirrors. It's, it's making people feel happy about what they're achieving. People are focusing on the cap. Mm-hmm. That's not the solution. The solution mm-hmm. is to drill the eight relief wells. And if you go, if you start drilling one and it goes into a blown out area of formation, fill it in instantly. Don't continue drilling with it. Start a new one and keep expanding that. That zone. I would start 1,500 feet away from an existing well. If that's too close, move out to 2,500 feet. Mm-hmm. Depressurize the zone. Take, let all the oil and gas out of that area, and keep the, the oil and gas running until the, until the pressure in that zone drops to 2,300 psi, which is the weight of seawater, and the seawater will keep it down. So you need to keep pumping and keep extracting the oil and gas from that area recognize that the well is destroyed, forget it, recognize it. It's, not, it's, it's everybody's fault. It's Halliburton, it's BP, it's Schlumberger, it's that Transocean, it's all of them. They should all be sued from here to kingdom come. It's all of their fault. And just recognize it and forget it and move on and, and just do the, the thing that you can do, the only thing you can do, and that's depressurize the area. Is anybody even talking about this beside you? No, I, I, I don't see it at all. I just I think everybody's in a fool's paradise, in dreamland, in pretending this didn't happen, in, I don't know, conning themselves, conning each other. I yeah. have no idea. You tell me. It's amazing. The, mentality. the human species is, is quite adept and adroit at denial. It's, it's sure. a national pastime now. Uh, oh, the economy is recovering. Oh, don't worry. Oh, my. We're in trouble. This is only going to get worse and worse. More leaks by the day, in, in all likelihood. 
these all of this blown geology now is do you think it's full or is it still filling all these caverns and crevices and and they're called they call them seeps they kept calling that an oil spill they call these leaks seeps my yeah. god they're they're crazy they gush you yes of course they and the fools. fools are from the top you spill things from your you spill your tea you spill your 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 right. your, right. your cool drink whatever you don't Spill anything. This is all gushing from the bottom. It's a stupid word, but mm, that's what we use today well, for the press. Forty percent of the Gulf may be covered with oil on the bottom now, and these plumes. Uh, there's really no way to get rid of that. Uh, that's just there. Uh, this talk of uh, this idiot Obama and his talk, his people pull the cap off and let's recover the oil the way we were recovering it. Hell, only one percent of the oil ever made it to the surface. They weren't recovering anything. Yeah. Uh, it just it's it's a joke. So, yeah, no, it's, it's not gonna work. That's the silly idea it's past. We've got to move on and, and extract the oil from the whole area, depressurize it, and that's the only long term solution. And there's no way to eventually stop it. You're going to have to keep tapping it, correct? To equalize the if pressure. The oil is being generated right now and the, and the way to tell that is you date the oil. You date the oil every yeah. week. Yeah. If the oil is getting older, yeah. you know you're getting to old oil. If it's staying the same or getting younger, then you, you then your oil is being generated right now. Understand? So it's a simple process. Get six universities involved. Do you think that BP is doing this and not telling anyone, or do you think Who they're knows? not going that far? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I, I can't get anybody to date the oil. I cannot get anybody to take this whole thing seriously. Perhaps the Russians have already done it, but I'm not. Um, I don't find the literature there, um, and I must spend more time on that, on, on dating the oil, because I think that would answer everybody's questions, what is really going on in the so-called scarcity of oil that they propagate around the world, that it's a, a fossil fuel that's running out. It, it looks right. great for, for making well, money, but it's all nonsense. One of the biggest scams of our lifetime was peak oil, of course. Uh, yeah, that's it's just. It's just uh, screwing the middle classes and everybody else with the, the supply and demand game and keeping yeah. the supply under control. It's nothing new. The old games, old game. Yeah. What we're dealing with here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a crisis. And uh, what you've just heard and what you're hearing from Chris Landau is common sense, which we have been woefully, virtually out of from day one. We're not getting any. Chris, thank you uh, so much for being here tonight. I'd, would you come back sometime and uh, update sure. us further? Sure. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's been my pleasure. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Good night. Mr. Chris Landau, an uh, oil geologist, uh, obviously a brilliant man. Common sense. When have you heard common sense in the mainstream media about this? You haven't. Not there. These people are, are playing with uh, a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions if they carry on the way they're doing. And they will. All right, we'll be back with you again tomorrow night. See you in 21 hours. <laughs>